Good morning. Welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming church. No matter where you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. And I extend a warm welcome to everyone here in the church and those watching on video as well. We hope someday you can come visit us here. If not, until then, continue watching us. <laughs> um, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on this morning. My name is Ingrid. I am the moderator here. I like to introduce myself because I know most of you know who I am, but there's always the one or two that don't. Um, let's see. I've got a lot of announcements this morning. Um, today is the fifth Sunday. So those of you who have been pledging, and even those who don't, Today's the day to maybe put in an extra $5 or whatever you can in the offering. Um, it just helps us just a little bit more. Today, at 1 o'clock on the front lawn, we're going to have the blessing of the animals. Come bring your, your puppies and whatnot. Um, just make sure they are leashed or in cages. Um, <laughs> because we don't want to terrorize the neighborhood with the animals. And then we have the Holiday Bazaars coming up this coming week. It's on November 9th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Women's Fellowship is seeking donations for the silent auction. Some suggestions are gift cards and themed gift baskets. If you would like to help, like to help receive donation items, there's a sign up in the midway. Also see um, Penny or a member of Women's Fellowship for more information on donations and drop off times. And also, come to the fair. Uh, Missions is seeking your assistance also with several holiday drives. There's a number of them. They're all um, they're listed in the midway there. I think there's a handout for that too. Um, and let's see. There was. Can I just interrupt yep. for a minute? I'm going to say welcome to all of you from the Wallace family, and we rejoice that you are here for the baptisms, and we celebrate the opportunity to have you in our midst. And I just hope that you all have a copy of the bulletin to join us as we go through the service as well. Thank you. And I do have one other thing to announce that isn't listed in the uh, bulletin. Um, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had our trivia night here. It was a great success. We all had a lot of fun. It was very silly and lots of fun. We have another event coming up on November 20th. We're going to be um, having a kind of a gingerbread night, and I'll just leave that as that. But afterwards, we're going to decorate the church for Christmas. Um, and we want lots of help for that, and also lots of, lots of fun with gingerbread men. Um, and I think that's pretty yeah. much every, every, there's also a lot more stuff listed in your bulletin, too. Oh, Janice has something to say. That's right. For, I know you told me. Okay. I have a scatterbrain. Thank you, Ingrid. I'm Janice Kimball for the Christian Education Committee. And I have some exciting news to announce to you. We have a nursery attendant, Sierra Bright, and her mother, Cindy Bright, as assistant. They are downstairs right now in the nursery uh, for your use, okay, for... Um, uh, infants through preschool age, and uh, uh, and of course, for uh, if you would like to bring your your baptized child um, down after the the baptism, that that would be fine. And uh, uh, we also are having a class in Dutton Hall. I will be going there uh, through these double doors straight to the um, to Dutton Hall uh, on this floor for grade school young folks, um, and uh, and we will be talking about God's gift of water and the rainbows, and and we have. Lots of exciting things to do. So after uh, the, the baptism, uh, please join me in Dutton Hall. Thank you very much. Anything else that you have? Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask you to, to gather with me, and uh, please stand for the call to worship.
Come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Let us work him and worship Jesus in the sacred place. Come bearing all your gifts, behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with zealous offense. Come with all your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole selves. Please join with me in the hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West, on page uh, 687 in the hymnals. standing and join with me the unison prayer of invocation. We crowd each each other other out, clamoring clamoring for for glimpses glimpses of and glances glances from Jesus. We We get get caught caught up in the hype, buzzing with the energy energy of and adrenaline from the crowds. Who wouldn't? However, in doing so, we neglect the quiet opportunities to welcome Jesus into our homes and lives. We need not fret over our mistakes and mischances of years and days past. God is forgiving and gracious. We are liberated from the things we cannot change and empowered to influence the things we can. No matter where we may go, God is always near. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. I want to speak to you for just a moment about stewardship. This is the time of year where we look for pledges from the membership and for donations to the church. And I want to equate it to Halloween. How many people give out candy on Halloween. Show of hands? Yes, almost everyone. It's one of my wife's and my favorite times of the year. We love having candy to pass out to the kids that come trick-or-treating. And we give it away by the gobs. I probably spent $150 yesterday 
on can day to pass out tomorrow night. What is best about it is the smiles on the youngsters' faces and even on their parents' faces as they lead them around and they get their candy. We give it away by the handfuls to each one and put it in their basket, and we love it. We even get dressed up in our costumes to do it. So now with stewardship and pledges and donations, it's the same type of thing. The kids and their families all smile and laugh and giggle. Well, when you make donations and pledges to Groton Congregational, our family laughs and giggles, and it helps us to maintain our beautiful building. Our grounds provide fun things for the kids here at Groton Congregational, and good times for the parents and the elders too. So please consider giving a pledge and donations to Groton Congregational this year. They are going to be collecting the pledge envelopes on November 13th, I believe. Yes, in two weeks. So please consider doing it and enjoy yourself as you do. Thank you very much. And you may remain seated as we join together in singing the verse three of hymn number 393, One Bread, One Body. Thank you. Well, at this time in the service, we are inviting you to consider the gifts that you will be offering to the Congregational Church here in Groton. And we give thanks that though we are scattered and many across the globe, we have these opportunities each week to gather and to share our time of worship and to listen and to learn, but also to have the opportunity to share the gift of baptism and welcome the families. And so please consider your gifts as you do so today in continuing the shining of the light of Christ here in Groton. Thank you.
I invite you now to turn to your bulletins and join with me in the prayer of dedication. Thank you for choosing to receive these gifts that we now share with you, gracious God. Bless each offering, including ourselves, and let every single one be given in service to you. Amen. Invite you all to sit down. Do you want the walking mic? Hmm? Uh, okay. uh, I invite any of the children if they want to come forward because I have a, I have a little bit of a story, history, Halloween thing for this morning. Ooh. And Ingrid, you've got children. Woohoo. And if you would like to walk around the little one while we're doing this, you're welcome to do so. Because it, it is a sticky ball 
I don't want you getting in trouble. <laughs> All right. Your sweater? Your sweater? Hmm? Your sweater? Oh, yes, I just got off. <laughs> I got so many things I'm doing this morning, but, and I'm all set for Halloween. <laughs> kind of bright and shiny. And get something else to see away the darkness. Janice, we've got baptism. Sure, sure. Actually, let me let me ask them if they want to. Would you like to stay forward for the baptism, or would you like to return to your seats? You want to stay here? Okay. You're welcome to. Great. Thank you. Okay. Then I invite you to come forward, the Wallace families. As you all well know, due to COVID, we've not had too many baptisms in the last few years, but we have some children that have recently been born and the parents are looking forward to the baptismal service. Inside your bulletins, I believe that you have the liturgy and I will be inviting you to join with us at a certain time. And I understand that there's some cameras over here trying to get, would you like to, uh, um, yes, make it, there you go, okay. <laughs> and so I welcome you this day as we are being given the opportunity as well to give thanks for the birth of these precious child she felt. Okay. And so we give thanks for their presence here with us this day. And so if you'll turn to the insert, I invite you now to join with us in the liturgy. Yes. We read in the Gospels that baptized by John. Jesus witnessed that all people should turn and accept the God who had already accepted them. We, the friends and members of the Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, now the body of Christ, do here proclaim the same witness. The God who has claimed every person as a beloved child will today speak for the children about to be baptized as God's beloved children. At this time, we invite the parents and godparents to come forward, which they have, to present their children for the sacrament of holy baptism. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. As Jesus taught us on many occasions in the Gospels, God's grace is not limited to we adults, but it is also freely given to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of our children's acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Let us together proclaim our belief in the water of baptism. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life forgiven of sin and one in Christ, members of Christ's body, the church. And let us now join together in this litany. God be with you. And also with you. And let us give thanks to God. It is good to God. Thanks and grace. And so let us to join together in prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of water that brings us life and health. In the ancient waters, your faithful servant Noah turned from death to life when he turned toward you. Your child Israel found you close at hand when it passed from death to life amidst the, the raging waters in the River Jordan. Jesus received John's baptism and witnessed that we too should turn toward you. Recalling your same boundless love, we ask that you bless us as we baptize Brielle, Irene, and Jackson Douglas with this water that we might be your servants to the world, strong in trust and courageous in loyalty to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, and do you want to, we welcome the godparents who have come forward at this time. 
And so I ask you as well these questions. We rejoice with you all and welcome your children into the worldwide family of God, of Christ Church. Do you now promise with God's help and guidance to make your lifestyle one that reflects the spirit of Christ so that your whole life may convey to your children the full spirit of love and care that we receive from God? The response is, we do. Will you teach the story of our Christian faith to your children and demonstrate its spirit and trust by giving them the full spirit of love and care that we receive from God? And the response is, we will. Will you lead your children faithfully by demonstrating Christian faith in your own lives? Will you set for them an example in attendance at church and in committed Christian service that when they grow old enough to understand faith for themselves, they may know both the blessing and the responsibilities of being counted among Christ's followers? If so, respond, we will. And so to the godparents, you who are godparents have a special relationship to these children. Will you join with these parents in supporting their children in the faith and way of Jesus Christ? The response is, we will. And to the congregation. I'm going to just add one little piece here, being very mindful of the ways of the world right now. We are asking them to join in responses that are challenging with all the different distractions with what has happened with COVID. And I'm very mindful that we do the best that we can as people of faith in these current times. And so I give thanks for their responses, knowing that they have no idea what life is going to ask of them and what will the ups and downs that will come. But to you, the congregation who've been walking longer on your journeys, and you know some of those challenges and some of the older and younger members, I ask you, the members of this body of faith, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to these children about to be baptized as they live and grow in Christ? The response is we do. Okay, and I'll change places with you. <laughs> okay. And so, gracious Lord, we pray that by your Holy Spirit you will bless this water and by your Holy Spirit that you will save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ that sin may have no more power over them. We pray that you will create new life in these children baptized this day, that they may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm going to invite you to just hold the child. Usually I would take her. No, well... I was going to say, normally I would hold her, but I don't know if she would. Well, she's sleeping well. Let's do it this way. By what name? Uh, Brielle, I think. So you get to hold her. <laughs> okay. Brielle Irene Wallace, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Holy Spirit be upon you. Gabriel, child of God, disciple of Christ, and member of this church. Amen. All right. I guess I'll let you hold him as well, yes? And by what name would you like to have him? Jackson. Jackson Douglas Wallace. Oh, you want to have her hold him? Okay. Oh, he's got a tuxedo on, folks. You've got to come and see this. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Holy Spirit be upon you, child of God, disciple of Christ, and member of his church now. Amen. All right. And so, shortly we will invite them to walk them around. Um, I'm going to offer this prayer upon both of them at this time. Loving God, your son Jesus embodied your eternal love in word and deed. Thank you for that gift. We thank you also that today as the body of Christ the church, we can witness that same love to Brielle, Irene, and Jackson Douglas, proclaiming that they are your beloved children. May you encourage all of us in our life together that we might find new ways to uncover your gracious presence, presence in the world. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And...
Yes, okay. <laughs> presume to tell them what they must believe, for ours is a community of free inquiry and searching. We promise to share, them, share with them our experience of faith and ask that they share their lives with us. In this way, we shall learn from one another, grow stronger, and be more faithful to God as servants of all people. May the Holy Spirit be our comfort, strength, and our guide always. May the peace of Christ and the love of God be with you always, filling your hearts with joy. Thanks be to God. Okay, and so now, thank you for coming, Janice. Wait a minute, we're going to sing. Um, if you will turn, and I don't remember the hymn number. Um, 75. 75? Uh, we were, I was there to hear your born and cry. It is, I hope you have some tissues. <laughs> I offer these um, certificates. And I invite you now to walk them through the congregation and introduce them as the congregation sings this beautiful hymn. Thank you. seated. I believe that Janice is going to lead the children now into Sunday school. Yes. And any may go with her or you may remain here. And, and the preschoolers, if, if wished, may go downstairs uh, to the nursery room and uh, the attendants are waiting for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to go to Sunday school or stay with your parents? You can go with some, to Sunday school. She's got some interesting things. <laughs> or you can go back with your parents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What an interesting morning. Thank you for being here. And thank you for the gift of being able to offer the baptism at this time. As I was saying, during the service, we know that life has its challenges. We do not know what all will come. It was interesting to 
meet with Kevin and Ashley the other day and learn that they were part of this church when they were younger and they have come back. And so we give thanks for that opportunity. We, I invite you now to share some of your prayer concerns and your joys. I will lift up a few that I have received. We lift up prayers for a previous interim pastor here, Joan Priest, whose mother, Janet Withers, has passed away. And so we give thanks for um, Janet's life, for the ways in which Joan was able to be there with her siblings at the passing of her mother, but also for the ways in which she was able to minister here to this congregation as you went through a time of challenge and growth, and for the love that she shared and for the ways in which you were able to share your love with her and learn in new ways. And so we give thanks, and I invite you now to be with me as we uh, lift up prayers. And Lord, just be with Joan and her family at this time as they celebrate and give thanks for Janet's gifts, love, and life. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I also have prayers from Phyllis Meyer, who is asking prayers for Mary Alpha, and for Leslie, for her brother Keith, and her, his, her mother. We give thanks for this invitation as well. May God be with them. And I'm going to lift up a few of the prayers that I have considered for today. Um, Tuesday is, Saint, is All Saints Day, and we will not be celebrating it today, but I invite those who would like to, to send to me the names of the people, the saints of this church, of your family, that you would like to be lifted up in prayer for next Sunday. Thank you. And we will do so. And today is also Reformation Sunday, or, or Reformation it would normally be Reformation Sunday, but we've got a lot on our plate. And so I just celebrate the gift of that time. We wouldn't be here in this form if it had not been for that. But I also want to just say prayers for us as, what, as we go through what I consider another Reformation with all that is happening within the life of our congregations, our church, and the world. Um, I lift up prayers for those who are continuing to recover from the hurricanes, but also from the fires and the natural disasters. And so, Lord, be present with them all. I will lift up prayers that we will all have safe times tomorrow as we celebrate Halloween, as um, In Ingrid was saying, but also a chance to just be playful and find ways to be in that spirit. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. I would like to open up the floor if there are any other particular prayers that you wouldn't want. Yes. Okay. I will send it right along to her. Okay, Connie has a card. She says, Janet, can you care each year and spend time with the members in Belichick Ball? Okay. It would be nice for everybody to remember. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay. Yes. For my friend Judy Atwood, who is starting with radiation for lung cancer. Um, Bonnie's lifting up prayers for her friend Julie, who was uh, beginning her cancer treatments now. Oh, God of grace. Our prayers. Yes. I have two. First one's kind of personal. Um, my aunt Solvig passed away the other day. She's in Denmark, so I don't know her that well, but she did pass. And I want prayers for my cousins and, and all the rest of the family there in Denmark on her passing. The other is uh, a little wider afield. Um, prayers for the people of Seoul after the uh, disaster the other night. Um, a joyous celebration became horrible, is all I'll say. Okay. We lift up prayers for the stampede that occurred in Seoul and for the lives that were lost because of the desire for so many to be able to be free and celebrate and for chaos to unfold and prayers for all of those who were there to be first responders and for the families who are now grieving. Gracious Lord, please help us all to find ways to make this a safer world. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. And the other prayer, what was her name? Solvid. Solvid. And we lift up prayers for Ingrid's beloved Solvid, whose family has gathered in order to celebrate her life and for the grief that is being experienced with her loss. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Are there any others before I go? Yes. 
for Aunt Masha, who was suffering at this, at this time. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes. Jack. Uh, just a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for what we've done today. And the guests that are here, maybe from different faiths, that we all have one God that we worship and it brings us together. And the young lady who just spoke with her thumb in the air, I hope you're okay. <laughs> Jack is a retired pastor and is giving thanks because he knows the gift that is occurring here with the people coming from different faiths um, to celebrate the gifts of baptism. And so we, we rejoice and give thanks. And for those who come even with an injured part of their body, we give thanks. Oh, God of grace. Yes. Phyllis is giving thanks for the opportunity to go to a party where there was Halloween decorations like a castle, and then there was a wedding. All right. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes, Lou. I would like everyone to please say a prayer for a happy, joyous, and safe Halloween tomorrow. Lou is asking for prayers for a happy, safe, and joyful Halloween tomorrow night. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Bill. Prayers for Paul Pelosi, who was attacked the other night, um, and for his recovery, and for all who were involved. And I'm going to lift up the, um, the continuing prayer with that for the safety of our nation as we go forward into the election. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Okay. And so with that, I'm going to move into the collective prayer and invite you into a time of, I will say silence, but Jackson can continue his presence with us. Oh, God of grace, the Lord be with you. Merciful and loving God, it is with thanksgiving that we have the voice of a young one in our midst this day to remind us of the gift of life, how precious it is. We pray for your spirit to be with us all now. Having lifted up the names of so many people for whom we have concern, for the lives of those who we have lost, who have transitioned into your realm. And we pray for those who are grieving at this time because they know how precious life is. And so be with their broken hearts, but also help them to celebrate the life of their loved ones and help us all to understand the different stages of life that we are traveling through, not to let us be discouraged sometimes, but rather to hear the invitation to grow in our challenges of life and to celebrate and learn and grow into compassion from which we can be present to each other and to be your hands and your feet, your eyes and your ears and your heart and your mouth, and to help your love grow and not just the challenges. Bless us now as we continue to walk as your children in this world, as your grown children and adults who have wiser eyes as we age. Keep us in your ways of love. We ask this in Jesus' name as we join together in saying the words he taught his disciples and now us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The Hebrew reading this morning is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand, ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The second Hebrew reading this morning is from the 32nd Psalm, verses 1 through 7. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no inequity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silent, my body wasted away through my groanings all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. And here ends the old scripture readings. And I will invite you to read the second Thessalonians passage on your own at this time, and rather move to the passage from Luke in chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Oh, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. And may God add a blessing upon our hearing of these words today and my reflections at this time. And I will say that I knew that this was going to be a packed service, so my sermon is shorter. Um, And if the children need to be walked about, we welcome you to do that, okay? And so many of you know that in the early morning, I like to watch for the sunrise. And it's fascinating for me to learn how to recognize now the different stages of the sunrise, going from the darker blue colors into the lighterness and sometimes into brilliant, beautiful colors because I've done this now for several years. Has anybody else done the same? Have any of you been sailors on ships where you were there at sunrise? Have any of you? Yeah? Okay. Well, as we heard in this passage from Luke, Zacchaeus is on the lookout, but it's not for the sunrise. Rather, he's looking for this man named Jesus who he's heard about, and he's heard he's coming to town. He's heard he's the one that can forgive him and bring peace to his heart and mind. He's in a moment, though, when he knows he's around and he wants to see, so what does he do because he's short? He climbs that sycamore tree, and I know that there's some of you that know that's him. Jesus saw him up on that sycamore tree and called out to him. 
Now we don't know much about Zacchaeus, except that he was the chief tax collector and he was rich, but he was also known because he was short. Hmm, think about that a little bit further. A tax collector, was he doing that so that he could have some power to compensate for his size over those who had made fun of him because he was short and taunted him? Now he had the ability to embarrass some people because they were behind, they were behind on their taxes. Think about it. We really don't know, but there have been others in history who we know have done that. We just know that those who were also in the scene and observers are upset because Jesus was going to have supper with him of all people. And even though he's proclaimed as a sinner, Jesus is still going to visit. What is that all about? Notice, and I've looked at some of the commentaries, Jesus does not call him on the carpet for what his sins were and admonish him, but rather just states, I'm going to come and stay with you. Notice Zacchaeus' response. I'm going to offer you all kinds of gifts and compensate, and I'll repay all kinds of people. And Jesus just says, well, today salvation has come to your house because you are part of the family of God. You are a son of Abraham, not because of what he offered, not because of anything that he was going to do. Zacchaeus, it's not about your size. It's not about the size of the money in your bank account and how much you could pay to compensate for what you think are your sins. In that moment, Jesus is offering a very free gift. The question is, will you receive him? Fascinating. Such was the life of the people living under the rules of the Torah before Jesus arrived on the scene. What would you do if you knew Jesus was going to stand here and say, guess what, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> what would you do? And he called out your name. The first thing I know is I would think, oh my goodness, what's the condition of my house, right? But to Jesus, it doesn't matter. And think about further about the scene when, they, when Jesus arrives at his house, what did they talk about? What did they talk about? So let's jump ahead to today and think about what we are teaching to one another about our faith and what is being required of these newly baptized infants or people who come into our midst. What would you want them to know about God and what happens when you choose to study the ways of Jesus and his teachings, how to live in the world and choose to live and teach and walk together? Interestingly enough, we had some scripture passages for today, and when Sue and I met earlier this week, she said, I've got a wonderful offertory anthem on the Micah passage, and I thought, that's perfect. It's an important one for all of us to hear again and understand what an incredible gift is in this passage from Micah 6, 6 through 8 for today. Micah is living in the period where there is the reward and punishment theology. And now he is hearing a very different message. You have to understand that he prophesied 700 years before Jesus arrived. He's not repeating the common narrative and threatening language. Instead, he is offering one that is flipping people's understandings upside down. It's an incredible gift if you really hear the words that Micah is offering. Now, you in the choir sang the words from the New Revised Version or the King James Version. But I'm going to read the words from Eugene Peterson, who translated the Bible into what is now called the Message Translation. How can I stand before God and show proper respect to the high God? Should I bring an armload of offerings topped off with yearling calves? Would God be impressed with thousands of rams and buckets and barrels of olive oil? Would God be moved if I sacrificed my firstborn child? Think about that one now that you have your firstborn. 
my precious baby, to cancel my sin? He's already made it plain how we are to live. What God is looking for in all of us, it's quite simple. Do what is fair. Do what is just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. (laughs) Take God seriously. Pretty interesting words, aren't they? If we read nothing else in the Bible, read this over and over and over again. The old translation is, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Can you imagine what the world would look like if this is what was guiding us in our ways? If we could share this with others today and between now, and I'm going to say it out loud, November 8th election, can you imagine where we would be, what peace we would all be feeling instead of the worry that we're going through right now? I can't help but not name this today because of the words in this passage. I know that we are all worried, but I'm going to say this. I'm fully aware that each of us, each of you, can help us all keep the calm and the peace here in our communities if we hear these words clearly. If you choose the message in the words of Micah and Luke, we will be able to stay calm and in the peace. Are you willing to help do that? I'm going to say the words again. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. Keep our focus on God so that we can learn the ways of love and walk together. And I'm just going to leave it there. And walk together in peace. May God bless us all as we try our best to live into that way. We just said yes as we reaffirmed our faith as we welcomed these infants into our community. May God bless us with the ability to offer that care in return. Amen. And so our closing hymn, I have to find out which one it is. Oh, for a world, number 683. Please rise. And as we go forward with this day, may God's spirit be poured upon us all so that we can see this world as we desire and imagine. And so may God bless us and keep us. May God make his spirit be poured out upon us so that we can go forward and be the servants of Jesus and share that love. Amen.
in your bulletins is the closing, this benediction response. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in pain, steadfast, strong, and true. No. like to join us for coffee hour you can walk through these doors Thank you.